So, uh, Roger, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what first got you interested? I hope they picked that up. What first got you interested in art? Uh, well, you know, I'd have to say it seems like the interest in art kind of goes back in spectrums. I was thinking about it and I thought of a few moments and it just kept going further and further back in life. And really, I think the first thing that really inspired me to do art at all was uh, my dad, probably. He is a, he's a draftsman. Mm -hmm. He does uh, he designs oil rigs and gas plants and stuff. So. In Houston? In Houston. That's shocking. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> figure, right? And he used to do it in Tulsa. Right, which, which is also shocking. Exactly, right. So uh, one day uh, he uh, sat me down and showed me that you can basically draw anything with like simple shapes. Okay. And he drew, uh, I think he drew a few uh, monkey faces or something right. like that. And that really stuck with me that you could draw things just starting out with, you know, rough circles and then starting to, you know, make a few concentric circles and it will eventually look like a face. And so that intrigued me. And that's probably where I very first started getting into art at all. So how old were you? About uh, probably about six years old. So about six years old. So until then, you're like everybody else. You're covering, you're watering, right. you're finger painting. Just do it kind and of then whatever. your dad shows you that and you're, all of a sudden you click that the whole world could be open to you. Right, absolutely. And I started to examine the world in you know simple shapes and stuff like that and really see Hey, that's that's a, a square set next to another square, you know, and right. you just start to piece things together. We we call that the A O H method because if you can write the letters A O and H, you can draw anything in the world because okay. everything's made of sure. triangles, circles, and, and squares. That, I've never even heard of that. That makes sense. Yeah, Very nice. So it's it's a pretty cool method. But uh, uh, so you since you were six, did you did you take any classes? Well, you know, I didn't actually. That's kind of the thing is. After I got that interest, it sort of petered into the regular interest that any kid might have, and it kind of, it got, art got mixed into everything else that I did. Sure. I took another second interest whenever I got uh, into uh, anime, I started watching Dragon Ball Z, of course, on Cartoon Network and stuff. Sure. And I really admired the, the aesthetic design of the characters and the way that they animated the flow and the movement and everything, and that really grabbed me, so that made me start to want to create my own characters and stuff like that. Right. So that probably was about 13, and that's whenever I started to get really into like wanting to be something of an artist in that nature. Sure. And it was Dragon Ball Z, not Sailor Moon. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, for me it was Sailor Moon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, Sailor Moon's yeah. nice too. Yeah, you know, when you're 13, Sailor Moon's hot. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Okay, so 13, 12, 13 years old, that's about the time that everybody starts hear, hearing your friends say, well, you suck, you're not any good. That's when the, that's when the voices Absolutely. of negativity start getting. Absolutely. Did that happen to you? You know, it did, and definitely, since I didn't take any classes and I kind of was like a, a shadow artist, I just did it in my own free time right. without really showing anybody, I would go to school and I would see the art class put out their very nice drawings and paintings and stuff and other than hearing just the general from you know friends like oh that's that's okay that's not very good you, you compare yours with what you see others do and you realize yourself like oh well, I'm not I'm not that great right now I need some time to improve right so so yeah I, I think I did get a little bit of that but not as much as I might have given to myself sure. in that sense Sure, and that, that voice in the back of your head hits us all really hard. Yes. So what did you do to overcome it? Um, really, I, uh, I just tried to, to improve on, on, my, uh, basics, on my basic skills. I thought that if I could learn all of the fundamentals, then I could eventually just work my way up, up the ladder. I, I always got told, my dad told me, that it just takes time and it takes practice and gotcha. it takes takes repetition and doing it over and over again and then maybe see in a little unique way you can change doing that. Sure. You know? For regular viewers of The Artistic Biker, you will recognize that Roger has taken the magic pill called practice. Yes. 
<laughs> that, that magic pill called practice is what got him through. You know, everybody's that's looking right. for that magic pill right. to take. So, like, I want the I want that one book that's going to show me how to draw faces, recognizable faces. Right. I want that one book that's going to teach me human anatomy, so that I can close my eyes and imagine people in a, pos in a position. Right. And there's no such thing. There really isn't. No, there really isn't. You, you just have to do it. So. So how long have you been doing it now? You're how old are you now? Uh, I'm 32. So 32, so 20 years, so about give or 20 take. Years. 26 years actually, from the time your dad taught you how to draw a monkey right. face to yes. 26 years later. And uh, uh, here you are, an author. Yes, absolutely. Got your first children's book published. It to this. It's been a long time, a lot of steps up that ladder, but I finally made it to it. Sure. Tell us, so tell us a little bit about your, your uh, book. So I've done, uh, it's a children's book called Let's Go to Space, Okay. and uh, it's about in the, I would give it the 6 to 10 range, I would say. Sure. Full uh, anime, or full illustrations across each page, and it's just kind of a little rhyming narrative about a boy who goes to space with his dog. You get a little bit of a fun story and some nice uh, visuals. Gotcha. So, gotcha. And you... Did you sketch it out on paper? Did you do it 100% digital? Or? So I did all my sketches digitally also. I use a program called Sketchbook. Okay. And I just have a Microsoft Surface and a pen. And I do my preliminary sketches on one page and kind of get the feeling for them. And then open up another document and create them from there. Okay. So why did you choose to do a children's book? I chose Right now, I chose to do a children's book because I've had a long history with trying to create longer and more adult-themed stories. And what one thing that I've noticed along this journey is I've been working a lot with my art, but I've sort of lacked a little on my storytelling. Gotcha. And so I've been trying for the really the last 10 years to do a nice combination of both, work on how to tell very nice, rich stories. And so one thing I figured would help me out is to get something out into the world, just to get something out there and get a feel for the system and how you know the whole publishing game works. Gotcha. And, and it worked pretty well. And I thought, you know, a, a children's book is an area where I can kind of not put so much time into research and ideas and things like that and I can just get something out there pretty quick. Sure, sure. So where are you headed? What kind of what kind of book do you want to do? So my true passion where I want to head is uh, doing like graphic novels. I would say. Okay. Somewhere in the kind of young adult region. Okay, so still Dragon Ball Z type, not, not story of O type. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So when you, is digital medium, is that is that your go-to medium? Is that what you? It is the medium that I prefer to do all of my uh, book illustrations and okay. stuff with, but I also love to do watercolor. That would be, I mean, they're kind, they're neck and neck with each other. Gotcha. I love watercolor, and uh, pen and ink is also very dear to me. Yeah, I so. love, love drawing with the fountain pen. Absolutely. I just, uh, just absolutely love drawing. Yes. I like you doing it with the uh, fountain pen ink that's not waterproof, and then you can come back with a, with a brush pen with a wet with a with a water brush and pull the pull the shading out. Right. I absolutely love, love that. I love the look, and I love to do it. Definitely. So, okay. So, what is what is your favorite subject matter? What would you say is your favorite subject matter? You know, the stuff that I tend to go to a lot are uh, plants and animals. Okay. And I also like to do lots of geometry. I like to do this mixture of uh, sort of, uh, I like to do surrealist stuff with mixtures of all of those. Right. Plants, animals, ge geometry. Right. So, How are you on fingers and faces? Uh, well, you know, they say that that stuff is always very difficult. Yeah, right. I'm pretty nice with faces, but of course hand poses are tricky. There are so many different little intricacies to a hand pose. Right. I would say I'm okay. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I suck at it. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard. Absolutely. And, and no matter how good you get, you look at that and go, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a hand. What's right. going on? And everybody tells you, man, that looks so good. I'm like, no. Look at her hand. She looks like she's got a seal hand. So and you wanted, yes, you know, they got lobster claws. That <laughs> happens a lot. Oh, but okay. Now you're not 
just an artist. You're not just an author. You are the unicorn. That's you what are. They call me. That's you what are a uh, chef. You're a Japanese. You're a Japanese chef. I am. I am actually on my break right now. I work at a Japanese hibachi restaurant. Yeah. And I do uh, tepon. What no go is tepon? Tepon is the Japanese word for hibachi. I got you. Right. We call it hibachi. Hibachi. So hibachi. That's right. Hey, with the fire. Choo right. choo. The train. <laughs> All the flipping. <laughs> we, we, we go and see him about once a week because my wife has a has a hibachi addiction. That's, <laughs> that's how that's how we met each other, and then we started talking art. The next thing you know, uh, I'm downloading his book, and I'm reading. My kids love the book, Thank by the way. By the they way. I think, really think it's a, think it's a lot of fun. Good. So okay, and then you have a website for your T-shirts. I do. I also have a collaboration on Design by Humans. Okay. And I make designs for them, and I have my own site that I manage through them. Okay. And that is Design by Humans forward slash shop forward slash Rojakun, R O J A K U N. Okay. And you can check out my designs on there. I haven't posted designs on there for a long time, or for maybe a few months because I've been working on other projects. Okay, now that brings up another important question. Slumps. You've been working on other projects, you've been doing other stuff. You know, obviously, life gets in the way of what you want to do because right. you're, you're busy tied up. What do you do when you, when you feel like you should be doing art and you sit down at the tablet and you just, there's just dry, the well's just dry. What do you do? So a lot of what I do is first, I try not to focus too much on that feeling of not being able to have anything come to mind. Okay. I try, I feel like sometimes if you get a little too upset in your own mind that you think you can't come to a conclusion, then you're probably not going to. And so I just try to not even worry about if I can't or can figure something out. I like to listen to music to get inspired. Sure. If I have nothing on the page. And a lot of things I like to do are just literal physical exercises. Putting something on the page and seeing if I can see something within it. I try to get my pareidolia working a little bit. Gotcha. See if I, can. I have no idea what pareidolia is. Well, it's, it's like the human condition of seeing faces and shapes I in, you. you know, like the man in the moon. There's like, like that. I, I understand that. So, okay, there was a, there was a, uh, an artist one time that suggested that you draw something every day. Just, just draw something, anything every day. Make yes. a commitment every day to at least put a mark on the paper every day. And I tried to do that for a year, and I guarantee you there's probably 100 pages in there that just have a mark on the page. Just one. <laughs> but, it, but at least I made a mark on the right. page every, <laughs> every day. That's I don't right. know what it did to improve my art, but at least I made a mark every right. day. <laughs> So, and how often do you practice? Do you practice? Every single day, every chance I get. Basically, I've worked art into my just habit in life. It's got, I used to not be as, you know, on myself to do art whenever I was younger, maybe 18, 19, and I would fall into long periods of not doing art and, you know, picking it back up again until finally I just worked myself into this mindset of do it and just keep doing it and anytime you feel you know negative towards the world or you need to some time to yourself go and draw anytime you have free moments to do anything just draw try to always be working on something mm -hmm. and it's gotten to where now I just I anytime you know I have a free moment I'm I'm trying to draw something do, do you have Structured practice. Do you have time that you set aside specifically for the next 60 days? I'm going to practice fingers and you just set time aside to uh, I do actually yes I try to work on different uh, you know, Like you said it might be fingers this time. It might be different uh, lighting scenarios or landscapes or I'm going to work on uh, Anatomy of a certain animal or whatever it might be But I don't usually use a lot of time on those. It's, I wouldn't call it 60 days. I would say maybe I spend a week looking at those and then I try to move on. My mind tries to push it along fast and if I sit on something for too long then I get bored with it and I just leave it there and nothing happens with it. Gotcha. 
but I found that if I work really fast and just try to push on to the next thing, I can get things full and complete and then work on the next. Sure. And it, it works faster. Sure. So how much time a day do you spend on, on, pre on structured practice? Well, so let's see. I work probably 10 hours a day and I don't have a day off. So I'm working seven days a week and uh, probably 10 hour days. I would say maybe six hours, two hours in the morning, two hours on break, except for today, and probably two hours tonight. Gotcha. So, that's, that's that's a lot of practice. Yes, absolutely. So, and it's just gotten to where, yes, practice, practice. <laughs> it's gotten to where I just want to do that. When I come and sit down, I don't, I don't want to play any video games. I don't want to do anything else. Sure. I just pick up my tablet or my sketchbook and start throwing down marks and ideas. Do you keep a sketchbook on you at all times? I used to, but since I go to work where it gets a little greasy, I don't really keep it in my back pocket as much. But on my days off, it is always with me. Gotcha, gotcha. What kind of sketchbook do you carry? Uh, let's see. Is it a mole skinny? No, it is a... <laughs> actually, I think the little pocket one I have is a downer crown. crown. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you brought one. You brought a little watercolor kit. I actually brought the little kit. It's behind you, and I just brought a few pieces of uh, Strathmore paper. Just to just to kind of, if we 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 didn't know if we were going to art in front of you, but he he right. brought his little just watercolor kit. I have this exact same really watercolor kit, and you can kit. buy the you can buy the koi watercolors to refill it. Oh really? So I bought I bought a. I bought the tubes of koi with watercolors to, oh, re to nice. refill it so that I could maintain and just keep this exact same kit over and over. Very nice. So that's, that's great. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Anything exciting in your life? Uh, well, I wouldn't say nothing more exciting than this. This is kind of a, a nice highlight. I really appreciate being able to do this. Uh, this is the most spotlight I've ever had as an artist, and I'm kind of like a a lurker artist, I guess you could say. Sure. I don't have any really real notification or recognition for what I do. So this is kind of a nice highlight to what I do. Great. Well, what's the name of the book again? Let's Go to Space. Let's Go to Space. Yes. And we'll put a link out to Amazon. Uh, here's the what the cover looks like. If, in case you missed it earlier, this if you're watching this live, then uh, you'll know there's actually not a book in my hands this big, but there will be when we edit the video. And then, uh, so let's go to space. You'll be able to get that. You can get that off Amazon. Yes. And then the T-shirt place was designed by humans. Designed by humans. Forward slash shop. Forward slash Rojakun. Rojakun. Rojakun with a G, right. not a J. Yeah. No, it's with a J. Oh, it's with a J. It's Roja. R O. So it's Rojakun. <laughs> R O J A K U N. Yes. Okay, we'll have links all that stuff will be in the description below, and you'll be able to click on it and. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very Appreciate much for having me, sir. Thanks, guys.